Hi, it's Chef and Builder Janie Pendleton. We're back inside the garage where we are remodeling our garage. Um, our good friends and neighbors gave us the kitchen cabinets um, out of their kitchen. They gave us their cabinets out of their kitchen. And my son is building them new cabinets. And so these were furry. So we got all these beautiful cabinets for furry. So this week we've been remodeling the garage all week. Trust me, we have been in a mess here and there. <laughs> so. So we're to the stage where we're finally decided what we're going to put on our countertop. And at first we had chose some laminate wood flooring and we were just going to put the planks and click them in across here. That didn't work. So, um, and that was a Target brand. Yeah, I will never do that again. But yesterday when we was at Menards, we found these Armstrong 18 inch by 18 inch floor tiles. And you could do the 12 by 12 inches as well. But these are just the back. The peel and stick. These are called peel and stick. Okay? And we decided since we're going to paint these a white, like a, like a milky, creamy white color, we decided we're going to go with a little bit darker countertop. Now my husband has put in all the pegboard. We hung all the cabinets. And uh, he's even put a shelf here across the top for some more storage up here across the top. And in a garage, that makes it a lot easier to clean of any, you know, no spider webs and, and mouse poo, you know, mice pee and stuff like that. So he put a nice shelf up here for that reason. But today we've got a uh, half inch plywood on here. That's all you really need is half inch plywood, unless you're planning on standing on this. Um, so that should do it. So we just put a half inch plywood on here and the 18 by 18 inch vinyl floor tiles. And I'll show this to you a little closer. So let's go ahead and let's get started. As you can see here, I already have a few on. I went ahead and I started from this outside corner because I wanted it even on the outside edge here and this direction, and this will give me less cuts. And then the next one, I'll do it the factory straight edge here and here, and I'll make my cut across the back. This will give me three sides of a perfectly straight cut to go on with the next one. It'll give me the partial towards the back and not a seam up here where I'm working towards the front. And this will also allow me, since looking down here, that's not, see how um, in and out that is? That's because of the way that this uh, pegboard goes on. That will give me a way to screw to some of these um, fairing strips here. I've got some fairing strips across here that we use for nailing and screwing stuff in. So, but isn't that sexy? Isn't that beautiful? All right, so here we have a square. So now we've laid them all the way down the front and they came together. You can see they seam together. You can't even see that seam. Look at that. It's right across the front. Looks really good. This was a nice straight, straight edge here on this. For tools, you're going to need a straight edge uh, cutter's box knife and a roller. The roll across here just like that right there. Okay, and that's just an extendable floor roller. A nice carpet knife that has a little protective top on it there. And if you're doing a larger floor area for this, you can also use a chalk line. For this, we use the front of this as our straight edge, so that wasn't even necessary. This is going together very quickly. All right, so we're gonna go ahead here and we're gonna finish this row until we get to the last full one. Because remember, we're going to do the partials back here in the corner. This amount will be different than this amount because our cabinets are deeper here because we have an electrical box that we had to go around. Okay, here I'm just using one of my father's old paint brushes, but you just want to make sure that you vacuum this off. Make sure there's no debris where you're getting ready to lay this, okay? Okay, what we're going to do here is we're just going to fill this off. All right. Now there is no arrow on the back of this. So you can turn this and move these around any way that you like, okay? As long as you don't have the same pattern sitting side by side, you're fine. You want to give this a tip up at about 30, 25, 30 degrees up. Line that up with the front. I just use my thumb, make sure that's lined up right there. Kind of push it in there just a little bit. Get that, put a little pressure on there. You put a little pressure on there, that puts those two seams together right there. And we're going to give that a drop and press. And that's all there is to it. And 
when you're done, you're going to take your roller and you want to make sure to roll that seam. Come down the front seam and just apply pressure on the roller. Just apply that pressure right there. All corners and all seams. And I'll go back over it again. are different. And that and drop. Okay. If you feel a bubble in there like I feel on this one, there you go. Just but if you can't afford a you know laminate, you know a full laminate countertop, this is an inexpen inexpensive way to go. on sale for $33.60 a box. Is that correct, John? Thereabouts. Uh -oh. And then again on that seam. In the corners. Especially right here where people might be standing right here on that edge. And we'll go over it one last time. That gets all the air pockets out, kind of like wallpaper. All right. All right. Now we're coming around the corner. Is I know. Make sure that you brush everything off really good. And I know that I want to have my line on the straight line right here up front. This has got to be the straight line. So that's where I want to be. If I don't get this right on it, and when I put my, my trim piece across the front, I can get dust and debris down in there, and that would be hard to clean out. So I want this, I want this right on there. But yeah, this, this makes a really pretty countertop. It's very durable. And you have this beautiful looking laminate type top. All right, so here we've got a partial where we've already cut out. And we know that we're gonna put the jagged edge towards the back. And we know that this right here is the cut edge right here. Yep, that's the cut edge. That will be on the back side. And we're going to line this up just like this right here. And we need a straight edge. And we need our knife right here. Okay, ready? And then we're going to take. And we're going to put our scored edge right here on the edge of the table. We're just going to pop it like that right there. Take your knife and we're just going to cut the paper just like that. Always keep your knife closed. And then you test fit your piece right here. And we're going to make sure that we fit in here. And look at that, we fit in here. It pushes back on a little bit, but that fits. feel it and as you're dropping it down pull towards you get that a nice and tight seam by, by pulling it this way lay it down like that there you go you got a nice seam and roll making sure you always get the edges and the seams and the corner seams where they come together make sure you get those really well This way. Make sure we go right up to that edge there. Pop that off. Okay. 
Okay, I'm going to need a little something to put right here. Alright, so we're coming around this corner, and I've got this piece cut to go around it, just like right, that so right there. there. I'm going to go ahead and set it in place then. We can put something up in there later. Alright. That's it. And here is our countertop. Just to keep those corners together really well. We put a little extra glue down. And there we have it. Okay. Alright, and there's the then we've got the walls painted, the cabinets hung, the top shelf put on for extra storage and to keep those upper cabinets clean where they dip down in there from you know from spiders and spider eggs and stuff like that. And we are painting the cabinets. Uh, white. We were going to paint them black, but I decided on white to keep the garage looking larger. Here you can see I've got all the base trim put on, and we did paint all the way down. And then I put new base trim on all the cabinets. This has been die racking back. I'm sure they can handle <laughs> whatever our weather's going to bring it. And all right, so all we have left to do is that sidewalk, and um, and start putting stuff away. This is our this is our mess. This is this is the before. <laughs> and uh, it keeps raining on us. We had all this in the driveway. It keeps raining on us, so we keep pulling it back in here. And we also have a circular cabinet here that we can't use. Um, we just got some stuff stored in it right now. But that's all going to go out front to somebody to take it or to the Goodwill. So now next, we're going to put everything into the cabinets. And then we're going to come back because we got some more free cabinets from another neighbor who got who pulled these out of a hospital, a doctor's office, or a clinic of some sort. So we're going to put these cabinets over here on this wall, and that's going to be all of our um, gardening and workout gym stuff, uh, toys, anything like that. And we got some really cool wire baskets to hang between here that's going to roll in and out. So this garage is going to have plenty of storage, and all of this is about to go sayonara. So anyway, this is Chef and Builder Janie Pendleton, and I hope you've enjoyed coming along for the ride, and we'll see you back here on the next project. Blessings. Wow, that is just like leather almost. It is so beautiful. It looks like a tile, a combination between a tile and a leather.